Hello, this is uh, Jeff Barton, Chief Intel Officer, Treadstone 71. Welcome to the Beacon Series on Education and Intelligence. Uh, we're going to talk about 10 areas that help get your intelligence program going. First of all, you need to assess where you are. I recommend doing a Cyber Intel Maturity Assessment to determine where you are or where you want to be. Regardless of whether you're just starting out, an assessment uh, allows you to lay the groundwork for building a solid cyber intelligence program within which threat intelligence should be a component. So make sure you assess that and get a program together. And we'll talk a little bit about more about that in these next 10 steps. We really want to educate everybody in information technology, information security, the C-suite, uh, all the business uh, departments you're going to be working with on the standard taxonomy of intelligence. This provides a shared understanding and baseline glossary upon which to build your communications while everybody is understanding what everybody means. Another area you must uh, take a hard look at is treating each vendor report as nothing more than another source of data. They may be solid, they may be highly uh, credible and reliable, but you should evaluate them because things change and shift, and you should have an evaluation of them for credibility, reliability, and relevance. To do so, you should use an NATO Admiralty sc uh, Scoring Model, the NATO Admiralty Code that you can find online. It's going to help uh, evaluate sources of data well beyond vendor sources and the credibility information provided by that source. So evaluate each vendor report using uh, this coding method while documenting the ease of data extraction, relevance to organizational issues, the type of intelligence they provide, whether it's strategic, operational, tactical, and technical, and the value they provide in solving your problems. You also want to grow and expand your intelligence program functions. Learning methods of anonymity, open source data collection, collection management and planning, production management of intelligence functions, analysis and analytic writing, and dissemination is going to add, um, add uh, immediate value to your organization. Operational security is critical. Make sure you do not establish this type of passive collection function from IPs inside your organization. There are methods to do this, but you should not do it because eventually someone will make a mistake and expose an IP, so it should not be done from an IP related to your organization. It's just a risk issue that can be easily addressed. Understand that intelligence is not the same as incident response or a core component of the Security Operations Center. It feeds information and intelligence into those functions, but should not be stored there. These skills are unique, and they must be shared, but don't bury them within areas because this is going to be a mistake. Um, we faced this for years and still do, putting information security under information technology, treating it as a solely technical issue. We should not make the same mistake with intelligence. Intelligence functions need direct access to organizational stakeholders. What you really should consider once you get this going is to build an internal community of interest, your own ISAC that is contextually aware of your organization. Intelligence is definitely a team exercise. You want to create standard processes and procedures, SOPs, to seek out your malicious actors and your adversaries, whether from with your organization uh, or uh, within the uh, log files because they come in virtually and you want to use adversary tactics, techniques, procedures, or methods to help drive your hunt and detect that's going to come from your threat intel platform that uh, you do want to eventually take a look at acquiring. I don't recommend that you uh, buy it first before you get your organization in place. What you will have is basically an M16 waiting for an army to use it. But understand that um, it definitely is valuable to have one, but do it in the right uh, function and the right time frame. Understand as well that hunt and detect is not a proactive function. It is an after-the-fact function because you're already looking in your log files, and if you do find them in there as a sighting, it's already too late because they're in your environment. You still need to execute to models like the diamond model and the kill chain, and you can integrate those together, but they're already inside the wire and they must be removed. You need to do this as a standard method of proper hygiene, as a matter of course. You also want to create a model of your adversaries and their capabilities that are target-centric. You want to expand your collection and include all areas concerning your adversary. The only way to fully understand what threatens your organization is to fully understand the enemy, their motivations, their competence, and their skills. Otherwise, you're going to continue to play a basketball game on defense, never crossing the half-court line, which is a recipe for assured loss. We're not advocating us so you go out and, and attack them. That's not what we're saying. But we are pushing for passive mess of mess of methods of collection 
and uh, ways to go out and collect data ahead of time before they actually hit you with uh, their new malware and their new methods. It can be done, it is being done, and you can do it as well. You want to develop methods within your organization to collect open source data, as we said, and you need to do this regularly. Like our third point, or our fourth point we talked about, uh, we must grow this function uh, so, so we collect data and information and develop intelligence that's pertinent to our stakeholders and our organization. you got to capture priority intelligence requirements, create information requirements or specific information requirements that are prioritized and vetted with your stakeholders. You got to focus on all sources of data, including open source collection, while devising methods for mission management that drives targeting for passive collection. You make note, though, that many vendor report subscriptions provide generalized and generic data and information. What we find is that periodically intelligence is part of the report. Occasionally, something relevant to your organization is included. Most of the time, the reports are of a create once and distribute many format that needs localization. It's hard for intelligence. Uh, vendors to provide uh, localized information to you in particular without you paying a premium. That's just the way the model is. To drive industry change, though, what you're going to have to do is work with vendors. Request and require source credibility ratings. Request citations with confidence levels. Ex have them explain to you their analytic methods. Take a look at the resumes of the staff working your contracts. To drive industry change here, you, you must become the model that uh, others will seek to emulate by driving uh, relevance, credibility, and reliability of data from your vendors. Seventh or eighth here, you really want to write an intelligence analysis format. Stakeholders have very little time in making them hunt for answers and sure it's failure. What you really want to do is use guides that uh, uh, we'll provide for you. Actually, you'll find them on cybershafarat.com or treadstone71.com, you'll find some intelligence analysis writing templates for you that will help drive that, uh, that method. Clearly, concisely written, no big words, 12 to 20 words per sentence, keeping it clean and simple. In addition, you really want to set up a listening tour of your lines of business and, scorp and uh, corporate stakeholders. This is part of your stakeholder analysis. You're going to have to gain permission to attend these meetings with the understanding that you are there to listen and learn, not to offer other services. You're not ready yet. Listen to digest and gain knowledge of your stakeholders. Don't listen to prepare a response. Gather this information and take it back to your organization to help your program move forward. You may believe you know your company, but knowing your professor ensures an A, and I guarantee you don't know all your stakeholders. One of the critical functions here is giving your organization time to implement an intelligence function. You've got to determine what makes sense for your organization as to what that time frame is. Institutionalize lesson learning as process of performance improvement, not assessing blame. Give your intelligence organization time to learn. Making mistakes in the preliminary stages of maturity is definitely expected. Just do not make the same mistakes repeatedly. Give your intelligence organization the authority to make decisions and the access to stakeholders to learn requirements and communicate capabilities. You really need to establish goals and objectives that are reachable and practical. Now, stretch goals are okay to have when you're first building a function, uh, but they can lead to unnecessary failures by putting stretch goals in there or too early. Leadership and the right level of leadership is required to manage analysts. So you really want to find the level for your organization based on your culture and your skills and your capabilities, why that maturity assessment is so critical. So when you add an intelligence function to an organization that has never had one, you better manage expectations. Eventually, a properly staffed, trained, and led group can deliver significant value to the organization. So with that said, here are your uh, 10 different areas. What you really want to be aware of, though, is, is trying to build these together in an overall strategic plan and program uh, for your intelligence in your organization. You want to define what it is and what it is not. You want to author a vision and mission along with guiding principles. You want to develop a series of goals with three to four objectives, each determining how to achieve these goals. And you want to gain acceptance and follow the plans. This is not rocket science. You really need to sit down and work this plan. And if you do, you'll actually develop a solid cyber and cyber threat intelligence function within your organization.
Thanks very much. Again, this is Jeff Barden, Chief Intel Officer for Treadstone 71. It's the Beacon Series on Education and Intelligence, and today we talked about 10 potential areas to help getting your intelligence program going. Thank you.